joining us today. Uh, it's now time to move on to the exciting bit of our, our speaker slot for today. So I'm really excited to be joined by Rachel Allen. Now your um, LinkedIn profile says that you're supporting busy, ambitious business owners who lack the time and inspiration to do their social media marketing. And obviously I'm going to put my hand up there because I'm one of those. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what we should be doing um, with our social media. So it's over to you. That's great. Thank you so much, guys, um, for having me here today. So um, just to let you all know that um, I know Rich through another network that um, we're both in. So I'm delighted to um, be joining you. I'm not from Herefordshire. Um, I'm actually based normally in Milton Keynes, um, but today I'm in Dorset. So I'm in um, yeah a different um location so uh yeah i've got a bit of uh, amnesia about where where i'm from and what i do but um the great thing is um about this whole world that we're in at the moment is um we're able to work from anywhere and we can be connected to people from anywhere in the uk or the world and i think that social media is a brilliant tool to allow you guys or to allow us to to do that and run businesses and connect with people and to grow our networks However, um, it'd be really good um, to get a, a couple of minutes of discussion going, whether you want to unmute yourself or pop yourself, um, pop some comments in the chat. Like, tell me what you think about social media. How does it make you feel? Do you love it? Do you use it? Do you hate it? Um, if you love it and use it really well, what type of conversations are you having? How do you engage? Um, it'd be good to get a little bit of discussion going on about that, if if you don't mind. Does anybody want to speak or does anybody want to pop a comment in there? Um, so, Stuart, you've got mixed feelings on social media. Um, I'm not sure whether you want to speak. Um, yep. Feel free. Go just, ahead. Just I think there's people use social media um, and blast things out on social media that they wouldn't perhaps shall we say say things to somebody's face and Absolutely. they hide behind the social media and I don't believe that the social media platforms um, regulate it correctly no no um, I think that uh, yeah it is very unregulated and I think you know they, they do work to ban people which I think is is great but there's you know the whole thing about um you know Twitter in particular when it was the Euro Euro championships you know those people should be banned struck off and, it, and it's so easy to, to do that I think from a business point of view I think it's good to have debate and to be um you know sharing views I, I learned so much from from people in social media you know that's where I get my news I curate my feed so that I get the news that I want because I find a lot of the stuff in the world um a bit too much um but yeah a lot of my hobbies interests places that I visit things that I'm interested in I get all that information from social media and um connecting to business owners I must say since I've been sort of um working more and connecting with different people um, online since the start of the pandemic, I felt a lot less lonely as a business owner. Yeah. So for me, that's been that's been wonderful. So um, Karen, you said that um, it's generally useful if used properly. Um, and Ali, you love it, and it's one of the most important ways of helping your business grow. So guys, um, if you both wanted to um, to have a just tell me a little bit about how you're using it success successfully, that would be awesome. Either of you go ahead, <laughs> Ali. I'm happy to go ahead because, um, interestingly enough, I've just taken on a new client um, in the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks who has the most fabulous holiday lodges and they are totally empty because they don't understand anything. They think you still have to pay for advertising. They don't understand anything about social media. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm sort of, <laughs> you know, holding their hand and helping them because... They've done a beautiful job of them. You know, they're in a fantastic location, but nobody knows they exist. So mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. for me is one of the biggest things is letting the world know you exist, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, Rich, you've said it works well for your business, but you, you're you always struggling with what, to, with what to post. And I think that that is probably one of the biggest challenges that, that people have. Um, you know, when I coach um, my social media clients, um, it's all about consistency. And I think that 
um, when business owners launch and they go, oh yeah, great, yeah, we need to get on these platforms. Um, and they go out and they go, oh, and after a few months, the business starts getting a bit busier and they're, they're then struggling because they've run out of steam, they've run out of content, they've run out of ideas. Um, so we're going to um, have a chat about um, some of the fundamentals that you need to get put in place um, to, to allow you to do that. So, um, so just um, quickly from Paul and Mark, so you found it of no um, no use business-wise, really, Paul? Okay, that's fine. Not really. You never know. Honest, no. Yeah, okay. Um, no, yeah, let's let's come back to you at the end and we'll see if you've um, had any flash of inspiration so after, um, yeah, after exactly. what we've after what we've talked about um you um mark use it to help build relations and make it a little personal blogs are a great way to share hints and tips yeah that's it it's about um providing value to um to your audience you know nobody wants to be um sold to um and i think it's a great way of having uh, of building relationships and connections however i do not sell anything to anybody until i've had a conversation with them you know for me social media is a tool to give me access to people that might want my help and my services um and the only way to turn them into a paying customer because let's be honest that's what you know that's what we're, we're after you know we're we here we need paying customers you know otherwise why would we bother um so you know i think it's a great way of working with traditional um marketing initiatives and that includes face-to-face -face or face-to-zoom networking so um the, the, I don't know whether you've seen um, on the on the Richard's ad um, today about um, the topic of this um, conversation, but basically I've developed a concept um, called stop dicking around online. Now, one of the biggest issues for business owners, I think, and the reason why they're not successful with their social media marketing is because they dick around online. So we're going to talk um, for the next sort of 20, 25 minutes about what dicking around online is, how it's costing your business, you and your business, and some steps that you can put into place um, to stop this. Okay, so um, I'm just going to share my screen because I have got some slides and I'm just trying to find the right window to open. Okay, Dick. Right. Can someone just give me a thumbs up that they can see? I'm just trying to move everybody around. Okay. Are you dicking around online? Do you want to know why and how you can stop it? Okay, so that's what we're going to um, talk about today. So I just need to move over so I can move the slides on. Okay. Sorry, the Zoom, the Zoom window keeps getting in the way, keep moving everybody around. So in the next 20, 25 minutes, you'll learn um, what dicking around online is how ducking around online is harming your business and what your business would look like if you stopped dicking around online. Okay, so to dick around online, I've just taken, um, you know, it's a bit of a slang term and I was a little bit conscious about whether it was the right term to use or not, but it's really resonating with people. So dicking around is just a term where you are not productive, you're experimenting, you're fiddling, okay, you're not taking a task seriously. That's the definition of dicking around. So it would be really useful to, um, if I can stop the share for a minute, just get a show of hands. Are you spending time online non-productively? Are you experimenting or fiddling around with social media and not getting any results? And are you not taking your social media seriously? So um, if you could use the hands up tool on Zoom, if you can do that, um, or just pop your, pop your hand up if you've got your camera on. Um, or yeah so do you feel that any of do you think you're dicking around online is basically the question I'm asking you I'm just seeing yeah it's quite a few yeah quite a few people few nodding few nodding heads are you committed to stopping it do you want to get results do you think that if you can if you can stop dicking around online you'll get better results on social media and grow your business do you feel good about that do you feel like you might want to commit some thumbs up there Nodding heads, perfect. Okay, I'm just going to carry on then. Okie doke. Maybe your problem is you don't know what to write. I know, Rich, when we spoke before, you were saying that that's one of a, a massive problem for you. 
maybe there's a blank page staring back at you. You just don't know what to put, what to talk about. And maybe that you were maybe you worry that your post or your engage or your video won't get any engagement. Maybe that's something that's holding you back. Some people are overwhelmed by the platforms out there and they're not sure what the best one is um, to, um, to be on. And um, we can talk about some, you know, talk about some of that stuff um, during um, the questions at the end. You know, there's so much about social media. There's always a new platform. There's always changes to the algorithm. There's always something new going on. You know, even Facebook's changed its name recently and it can get really, really overwhelming for business owners. And sometimes it's the job that just gets pushed to the bottom of the list because you just you just go oh god you open you know you get your phone and you open facebook or, or linkedin or what have you and then you're just like oh and then you just go oh, i'll leave it to tomorrow i'll post something tomorrow and then tomorrow never comes and then you're not building those relationships and you're not growing your business online so in my opinion i think that it could be like this if you stop dicking around online You'll have good quality conversations and engagements on social media. You'll have the confidence that you're spending time on social media wisely. So many times people open up their phone, they open up their Facebook and they go, oh, and then they see a cat meme or then they go on Twitter and then they end up in a row or they're looking at stuff on, on, on Instagram or TikTok or, you know, and you just end up down a rabbit hole and you go, oh God, yeah, there was an hour gone there. You know, you've got to, and we'll talk about this um, in a few minutes, you've got to go online with clear intent of what you want to achieve, okay? If you stop dicking around online, you could have clarity over your strategy, the structures and the tools that you need to have in place so that you've got everything you need within easy reach to be able to um, build relationships with your target audience online. And ultimately, you will have more time back which I just think sounds pretty good. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention as well was the um, mental health impact of social media as well, because I think, and I can see some folk nodding here, this is, you know, I say it's great, it's not great. For me, social media can be brilliant because it's opened up a world and networks that I wouldn't be in otherwise. However, it can be really toxic you know, people can be really mean. Um, there are people out there who intentionally just go out to wind people up and it's crap and it's horrible and you don't want it. So that's why it's important to make sure that you know precisely what you're doing on social media so that you can go, okay, yeah, there is that toxic side of it and you can try and manage that as best you can. But actually what you want to do is go, the, the benefits outweigh the downsides, okay? Um, because you'll be using it in a structured and professional way to allow you to build relationships with your ideal client online. So we're going to talk about the solution to dicking around online. And there is one. So don't panic about it. OK, um, just before I go on to that, actually, it'd be really good to find out from you guys. Is there something that you do? Like, can you think of anything specific? Are there specific times or things that you do where you are dicking around online and not being productive? Can you pop, unmute yourself or pop something in the chat? What does it look like for you? Anybody? Come on, somebody must. If you've all said you dick around online, Facebook. you must. Facebook, Sarah, yeah. what, do you, what does dicking around on Facebook look like for you? I love scrolling memes. Yeah yeah reading what people's had for tea yeah yeah okay so it's not it's not sort of like curating your feed in a way to get what's what's interesting yeah. for you okay cool do you do know that if there's particular people that put a lot of stuff up you can just um use the setting I, to stay friends but don't see that you can hide their posts <laughs> um, so if okay there's step one for you take go through your feed and the culprits put them on you snooze them for 30 days so some people um I, I have some friends that get very political and at key political times I just can't cope with them 
So I put, you know, I put them on that 30 day snooze. It just gets through election time and I, you know, and I don't have to, to face that. So that's a really good way of cutting out those distractions. So again, notifications, if there's groups that are really um, high value, um, go press the three dots and just make sure that you see all notifications or not. If getting notifications from invaluable groups are um, distracting you, take them off. Leave groups that add no value. Because why are you in there? Because it's just distracting you. Okay. Does anybody else stick around on any other platforms? Anybody care to share? Does anybody dick around on LinkedIn? Is it the casual, um, you know, platforms that are worse, do you think? I find some of them, you know, you, you might put a post up or a picture or something and someone will, will, or so, you see someone else's post. Or are you, you know, is you just constantly, oh, yeah, I like your picture. I'll put a picture. Oh, yeah, he likes my picture. And then you'd like, okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it Makes needs to be. You sort of seem to think you're just going around in circles doing absolutely nothing apart from like, you know, your mates' pictures and they like your pictures or something. Do you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> okay. So maybe there's some work there to be done in terms of sort of um, how you can take what it is you do for your profession and add in some value in terms of like um, somebody was saying, I can't, I think it was Mark. Um, yeah. Hints and tips and things because providing value and demonstrate using social media as a platform to demonstrate that you're an expert in your field, I think is, is really good. You know, we're all a bit over sort of like, like in a thousand holiday snaps, it, you know, you can use social media to really position yourself as an expert. Okay. So I'm just going to go back to the slides now. Okay. So. So there's three steps and it's about building strong foundations. Um, it's about having that strategy in place, because I think if you haven't done some prep work, you know, to me, social media is a marketing channel. So it's kind of like pulling together a brochure without any thought. You know, you wouldn't do that. You would think about your intended audience. Who is going to, you would, who is going to read this? You would think about um, what the competitors are, um, are looking at. You would set some goals, like what do I want this piece of communication, this channel to deliver for me? You know, these are all things that, that you need to think about before you start worrying about, um, you know specifically what to post because without that strong foundation without without that strategy it is going to be really difficult to to get results and and you're not you haven't got um good quality routines built into place with your ideal client in mind where you know that you're going to beat your um competitors where you're understanding where customers are in their journey with you so do people know you really really well so, for example, you need to think about the you know, different types of content that you might post, for example, on a Facebook page as opposed to a Facebook group. So people in a Facebook group are more likely to be super engaged with you because they've taken an action to join your community. So they're closer to doing business with you. So your, your messaging would perhaps be more familiar. You know, people know and understand you and that's where you'd be building trust. But if on your Facebook page or on your um, personal Facebook profile again same with LinkedIn it might be about connecting with people and just making sure that they under know and understand who you are and what you do like do do your social media connections really know the key ways that they can do business with you okay so it's worth going back over your platforms and just understanding you know having a look is what I post and is my profile set up in a way so that my target's audience understand really clearly who I am and how I can help them. So making sure that you've got the strategy in place is, is really important there. And again, the structure, what does it look like on, for you on social media? So a, a key part of this is um, looking at your um, consistency. How consistently do you want to post? Do you want to post every day? Do you want to post three times a day? You know, what have you got the um, bandwidth and the capacity to deliver, okay? Um, how can you make sure that you've got enough content that talks clearly about your offer um, in a way that adds value and engages um, and engages your, your target audience. And these things take time to think about, okay? You need to plan it, you need to structure it, you need to test things as well, okay? And it's a really good idea to have a think about what you offer and try and generate as much um, content 
ideas as you possibly can rather than sort of you know so that you've got that content that you can draw from rather than just going oh god what am I going to post today you know that 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 kind of what am I going to post today situation is I think one of the biggest killers for keeping your social media consistent okay and that's why people go oh my social media doesn't work I need to try something else and then they try something completely different and people go oh I'm a bit confused about this person and I'm confused about what they're offering okay so get your strategy sorted try and work out a structure so that you can make sure that you're delivering um that you're implementing your social media consistently and also i think it's about working on your confidence as well the number of people i meet i meet some incredibly talented business owners it's working with one particular lady um a couple of days ago and she does some incredibly strategic work in one of the UK's leading medical organisations, yet has such a lack of belief or ability to put herself forward on social media. And it's, it's a real shame and it's really holding her back. So we're really working on her confidence there to try and find a way to get herself out there on social media. Now, this doesn't mean loads of photos and delving into your personal life and um you know creating video content you know all those things are fine and good people like photos videos perform really well you know giving a bit of an insight into who you are as a person is a really good thing to do on social media but it's also equally good to just do simple text-based posts if that's where you feel comfortable okay start building engagement and connections in that way you know it doesn't have to be oh my god I want to be on Instagram but I've got to do Instagram reels straight away if that freaks you out don't do it okay work on your confidence make sure you're confident because I feel that one of the things that holds people back from social media and they and then they're in this like little battle with themselves and they go I need to do social media you know I need to I need to I can generate new clients through social media ah but I'm completely freaked out about you know what what that looks like and what I need to do Th then that puts you, you you're then having this battle with yourself and you go oh god I should do a video but oh I can't I haven't got my hair done I haven't got my makeup done or, or oh the, the setting isn't right I haven't got anything to say and then you don't do it that's a really difficult that's a really bad situation to be in and that's key dicking around online because you know you need to do something but you're not taking the action that you need and it's your confidence that's holding you back so so tr that's something that I think is really important to try and work on again working with the best tools now I, I've mentioned earlier I'm a big fan of kind of getting your content really organized because again and until you get into a real rhythm with it um, and you know instinctively and you've got a really big engaged following I think that's when you can kind of go okay yeah I'm gonna post about this today and post about that today and you can kind of do a little bit on the fly and I think it is good to do stuff on, on the fly things are going to happen in your business that are funny entertaining interesting you're going to have a really great call or meeting with somebody and you're going to go oh yeah there could be a post in that do that but also I think it's really important to get um get some tools in place to help you organize your content one of the worst things I think you can do is write an amazing post and it's brilliant and it's really well timed with a particular point in the year and you've not stored it anywhere you've just gone and put it natively in a in an app on facebook or linkedin or, or instagram or whatever you and then it's kind of like lost you've got to then scroll back through everything um in order to find it so one of the things that i think is a really good thing to do is to use a scheduling tool so again if you are really busy a scheduling tool is a really good way to um just get some of that content out of the way you can batch it up and you can deliver it um you know it can all be done you know you can get it done in advance and that's great for um certain elements of of what of what you're doing it just means that some of that housekeeping that day-to-day -day stuff some of those regular posts like you know scheduling like doing social media posts that link to your blog you know stuff like that is really good um to just schedule and get out of the way if you don't like the idea of using a scheduling tool some people don't um i would still say it's worth having some sort of system whether that's a spreadsheet or using a tool like trello so that you can categorize and organize your content i think just making sure that you've got 
um, the ability to find a piece of content again, and reuse a piece of content, and tweak a piece of content again. I think that really helps you to, um, you know, keep that inspiration going and, and maintain that um, consistent approach, that momentum, if you like. OK. So the final thing is around sorry I don't know whether everyone can can see that I don't know whether you can see this this black thing but it's around not selling and it's about building relationships so um you know I'm a coach I connect with a lot of coaches and some coaches have been coached to connect with somebody on Facebook and slide straight into their DMs with an offer of you know with what they offer then I'm kind of like, no, hang on, you've, you've not got to know me. I don't, I don't know you from Adam. I've not built up any of that fabled know, like, and trust. And social media, I think that's the key thing here. It's about building up that know, like, and trust. It's about having that laser focus on who your ideal client is, making sure you're finding them online and making sure that they're that your offer solves a big expensive problem for them and your content needs to address what that big expensive problem is, which is why it's so important to get those strong foundations in place and really understand your target audience at the beginning. So for me, social media is a way of having conversations with people. You know, you're not going to be doing your selling through social media. No one's going to see a particular post and buy something from you you know possibly if you sell something that's really amazing you know you see those companies that sell these amazing things that they import from china that look incredible on instagram i have bought a few of those myself but it's very rare that people make those purchases like that social media um particularly in, in b2b space it's about building it's about building relationships so for me it's all about trying to have conversations it's about working with other business owners that you may wish to collaborate with and it's ultimately about using you know working in tandem with other marketing channels um and good old-fashioned having conversations that's where you're going to start converting people okay so i think it's really important to make sure that you've got your expectations of social media um sorted and you know realistic really so um I'm just going to stop. No, I'm going to carry on. So there are a couple of ways that you can work with me if you would like some help to stop dicking around online. So I do have um, an eight week program called Making Business Social, where um, I help business owners to develop their own social media strategy. So some of the stages that we went through there, I kind of expand in um, a lot more detail. Um, as well so if you are a business owner and you've kind of got that blank you know that blank page that complete lack of inspiration then um you know we can maybe jump on a call and see um whether um you know the the, the problem that you're having um is something that that the um, making business social program can can support you with the other um sort of offer that I'm working on at the moment is um, a monthly membership um, called Stop Ticking Around Online. So this is a, a coaching group for um, business owners. Um, so I'm trying to launch it in December, but um, if you wanted to message me, um, that's something that you could um, potentially join in with. So this is where we do sort of Zoom coaching um, to help keep people accountable, give them ideas and inspiration, free, um, you know, there'll be free training for members. Um, bits and pieces like that so if that's of interest then um, do connect with me I have also got a guide which goes into these stages in a lot more detail um, and I can pop the link in the chat um, or you can just send me a little message if you're interested in um, but it is called the ultimate guide to stop dicking around online and it just goes um, into more detail about some of the stages that we've um, talked about so it's just a little pdf that I can um, get sent over for you um, so that you can figure out some ways to make sure that you're getting your stop dicking around online and you are more productive so I'm just going to stop the share there and um, take some questions so um, I have got um, hang on I just want to scroll back up just to make sure I haven't missed anything so, OK, um, our son is a history teacher who started history revision on TikTok in lockdown one, and he's got 
thousand followers. That is incredible. Wow. Um, Richard, anything you care to share on that? Um, no, just that, you know, I, it, it was quite astounding um, back last Easter, um, both kids were up and they were sitting at the, we were sitting at the dinner table and Emily turned around to Sean and said, oh, have you got a TikTok account? And he said, yeah, I have. And she said, how many followers have, have you got? And at the time he had about 56,000. And she nearly fell off her seat. She was so gobsmacked by it. Mm -hmm. And he's just, you know, he's having a lot of fun and he's linked in with other teachers that are doing it as well. And they're doing a great job. And I think the key point there is that your, your son is solving a big expensive problem for his target audience. I mean, whether he's going to monetize that he, re he really should look at it. it that could lead on to um, a, um, yeah, it, it could lead on to a, a side career. He may be able to have a career as an influencer. Um, he may get a, a role on a TV show. Um, you know, I'm thinking back of that teacher who was on that TV show, that Channel 4 show, who helped um, that lad, in, I think it was in Bradford, to stop stuttering, you know, that kind of thing. You don't know what this could do. But I think the key point there is your son's target audience hang out on TikTok. So he is on the platform that they're on. If he did that on Facebook. Yeah, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Um, you know, he's done probably some really good, helpful content. And that's probably, you know, he's he's probably making history cool. That's, you know, that's incredible. That's That's so good. But I think that's the point. It's making sure that you're solving a big, expensive problem and you're, talking about it where your target audience hangs out online you know don't I would say to you guys don't be inspired by that story to all run out onto TikTok unless you can be convinced that your target audience is on is there if they're there do it brilliant but if they're not going to be there don't waste your don't waste your time on it is anybody inspired to go on TikTok does anybody want to go on TikTok not seeing any yeah you know be where your target audience are or go on tiktok for your own personal use that's cool but yeah don't don't get yourself overwhelmed by these massively growing channels um because you'll just end up not not delivering anything you know pick a couple of channels and do you know whether it's linkedin facebook instagram whatever but do them really really well and try and build depths of um, engagement so yeah that's amazing well done well done to him that's perfect so are there any scheduling tools that you would recommend so um you've probably heard of the big ones there's hootsuite there's buffer there's monday and in my opinion they are all big faceless American corporates. I prefer to support smaller homegrown businesses. Um, so I support, I use Content Cal, um, has the same functionality. That's the tool that I use to coach people with. But if someone's already using a different um, tool, then um, then I would, um, yeah, I would, I would recommend that. So if anybody wants to connect with me, because I can get some discounts on Content Cal, um, I just contentcal.io that's the um, web address but yeah i can get you um a better deal than you would if you go direct if you are interested in content cal but um yeah do have a look but i think the good thing about the scheduling tools is you've got everything in one place um and with content cal you can add in your other marketing channels as well so you can put in your e-newsletters your email marketing you know your events so you kind of get the ability to view everything that's going on in in one place and it's got the option to um kind of organize your content for you as well so that it's easy for you to to find how would you recommend coming up with new post content um so that is something that um i have a process for um, with um, my business owners, uh, um, with the businesses that I work um, with on the Making Business Social program. So I look at, so the way I coach is um, really getting people to understand their, um, their core offer. 
So um, I use a, a process that Rich should be familiar with um, called content pillars. So these are, th you know, you may know it as brand values or what have you, but these are things that you do. Mm. Sorry, Alexa's just shouting at me from the front door. Um, so these are all things that your business does, your offer provides, and um, you can then sort of use them to generate content. So I would say to, to come up with new content ideas, I would have a mix of um, posts to engage. So asking people questions about what they're doing, I would say that you want to be sharing hints and tips and value. So again, I would maybe go through what your customers' big problems are and trying to talk about solutions. Um, I think it was, was it? Um, Mark, I think you mentioned about the IT hints and tips, you know, give away a bit of free advice, because what you're trying to do is get people to know, like and trust you, you know, um, share, share topics that are going on in your sector as well. OK, um, and we talked about in stage one of the, the foundations um, and getting your strategy sorted. Have a look at what the competition's doing and use that to inspire you. So hopefully there's a few places, a few ideas there to um help you to generate some some content ideas but um you know if you wanted to work one-to-one -one, uh, well you know if you wanted to work with me through the program then um then that's something we can do um for, for some of the businesses that i've been coaching you know in an hour's one-to-one -one, we've taken your um we've taken the businesses called pillars if you don't have them i can help you create them um and we, i think in an hour we've generated i think most i've ever generated in an hour is 111 content post ideas just by using that process so um yeah it, it can work it can work really well so now the business owners that have gone through my program have gone oh god right okay they've now got like all the stages that they need and if they've lost that inspiration they can go back to this spreadsheet with the ideas and go ah oh, actually yeah that can work i need to put i need to put that in next so um that's the approach that I use, but um, yeah, it's uh, you know it does it does work it does work really well, and I think it's worth spending a bit of time sort of brainstorming that and getting that getting it all written down because I think people you know they understand they need a brand strategy they understand how they need a marketing strategy actually you need to make sure that you've got your social you know you've given the social media the same attention if you're just kind of going uh what shall I say today it's a bit like going uh what should we put on the front of this brochure you know it needs to have the same the same um, the same thoughts thought process going into place so cool i think karen needs to drop out thank you for joining though karen is there anybody else are there any other questions at the minute about any specific channels or platforms no it's gone silent does anybody feel that they have a little more insight into how they might stop dicking around online if there's been a few of you that think that you might be susceptible to doing it Sarah, you're nodding. Anything that you, what, what one thing you're going to do a bit differently? Definitely uh, not unfollow, but mute or like you said, hide hide some of the stuff I don't need to see. That mm -hmm. might give me negative vibes and pointless. Yeah, yeah, wasting precious minutes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Any anybody else got sort of thought of anything that they might want to have a look at? to try and help make sure that their time online is a bit more productive. Look. Oh, go on, Ali. I was just gonna say something, you know, that I, th I think social media is fantastic, but as you say, and especially through lockdown, when people were really struggling with mental health, there was so much negativity on things like Facebook. It was just, so I just immediately, anyone that puts horrible negative stuff on my, I just block them immediately. Because mm -hmm. I don't want that kind of stuff in my life, or in, you know, appearing on my feed. Yeah, so absolutely. Just for just blocking people who are, are horrible, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you know the only thing you know, it is good that there is some degree of control on there for us. And you know, if somebody's, you know, I think it's there's a line between sort of healthy debate and you know people just going, oh god, you know what you say just winds me up. And you can switch that off, and they'll never know. And if anyone goes, oh, did you not see that that I put on Facebook? Just go, oh, probably didn't, you know, the algorithm, just quote the algorithm back and go, oh, okay. But you've blocked them, so that's why you can't see them. So, okay. 
Cool. If anybody wants to um, grab a copy of um, the Ultimate Guide to Stop Dicking Around Online, um, I just think, can I put it in here? Yeah, I've got a landing page so you can grab a copy. So it's just um, a PDF that you can download. So if you wanted to get a little bit more insight into um, some of the, you know, the steps that you need to, to put in place um, to make sure that you're spending your time online more productively, then I would definitely recommend giving it a read. Um, so yeah, if there's no more questions, I'm going to hand back over to Rich. Thank you all for having me. And it's lovely to meet you all. Great. Thank you very much, Rachel. Brilliant. Um, thanks for uh, your time today. And uh, I'm sure everyone will download that, uh, that guide. I will put a link, that link uh, in the email that I send out afterwards as well for, for everyone uh, to make sure you get it. Um, thank you again. We will be back again next month. It is December, believe it or not, our next meeting and is our Christmas event. Uh, we will be doing prizes and a Christmas quiz and there'll be prizes for the best Christmas jumper. We want everyone in Christmas jumpers uh, and also the best um, Zoom background or if you're back in your office, Christmassy office background, there will be prizes. Uh, and we are going to be doing some stuff with the Midlands Air Ambulance, which is our uh, charity, our chosen charity. Mary from the Air Ambulance will be with us, giving us a bit of an update of what uh, the Air Ambulance has been doing over the last 12 months or so. So that'll be really good. So that is on Wednesday, the 8th of December. So yes, it is in December, uh, but you'll still have time to have the rest of your Christmas parties, I'm sure, after our event. So thank you again. Have a look out for the email from me and I will get this onto YouTube as well. For, for you to pass on to people who've missed today's event but that's it from us uh please keep a lookout for stuff that's going to be happening with uh, hm biz heritage means business next year keep a lookout in your uh inboxes for emails and have a look on our social media channels because there will be some um stuff happening next year that we're really looking forward to i can't say any more about that for now i'll keep you uh on tent hooks uh but keep a look out for things that are happening next year with how for jimmy's business but that's it for today thank you again to rachel for uh, your time and uh, your insights and we'll see you all again uh, keep safe and we'll see you all in december thank you bye bye thank you bye bye, -bye.